so good morning all of you uh, welcome back to yet another exciting young science leader series that is ysl series uh, here with us dr p madan kumar uh, we have two sessions today morning session is by dr p madan kumar uh, dr madan is a scientist and assistant professor uh, of the academy of the sir acsir and uh, department of biochemistry at csir cftri mysore uh you know that is actually a food technology research institute uh, he has been working there from 2018 till date and uh, uh, dr madan did his post doc at uh, uh, you know uh, brown goldstein lab of, of ut southwestern medical center dallas texas in the us uh, from 2014 to 2017 and uh, he holds a phd in biochemistry from university of madras in 2014 and uh, subsequently he did his uh, before that he did his mphil in biochemistry in the university of madras same in gindi campus and uh, msc biochemistry he did it in from tiruvalluvar university in 27 uh, 2007 so his research interest include hepatic stellate cell biology cholesterol and lipid metabolism and cancer therapeutics crispr cas9 gene editing i heard that uh, his current interest is on crispr cas9 gene editing So right now he has got three ongoing grant and aid projects from the CSIR as well as ICMR, and currently guiding one postdoc, three PhD dissertation, and 15 MSc MTech students under the YSL internship program. So it's a it's a great uh, privilege to be here with you, Dr. Madan, and especially I'm really glad to know that you're guiding 15, uh, you know, the VISL interns. Uh, you know, that's a remarkable achievement. and the thanks a lot for the voluntary work i'm sure that the students will be very happy to associate with you uh, especially uh, you know to learn about the functional food and the crispr crispr cas9 and uh, here with us uh, mr uh, miss yesha barucha is co moderating this session yesha is a student and btech in biotechnology from uh, a university in gujarat and of course dr nitin is also with us today and uh, over to miss uh, yesha barucha you can introduce yourself and then the speaker Good morning to all the dignitaries on the dais, as well as all my dear colleagues. I'm Yesha Bharucha, pursuing B.Tech in Biotechnology from Navsari Agricultural University, Gujarat. Apart from this, I'm a poet and orator. And today, it's my honor to welcome you, Dr. P. Madan Sir, in this YSL series. And proceeding forward with this series. i would like you to uh, give us your wisdom and knowledge regarding the topic thank you please sir proceed forward further uh, dr navin could you please unmute thank you for uh, letting me know that because i was talking without the uh, checking the mute so thank you uh, ms yasha dr pali please dr nitin for you know having inviting me to this you know uh, pleasant morning so it was you know very much you know, excited and uh, very happy to uh, stage uh, you know you know or you know uh, be with you uh, all for this you know wonderful day so let me share the screen first yeah so basically like you know for the next uh, 25 30 minutes i'm going to talk about my experience with my teachers and mentors so which has you know aggravated my thirst for research so basically you know myself uh, madan kumar from uh, csir cftri mysore uh, i have joined uh, the institute sometime like uh, in 2018 january and uh, uh, presently i am serving as assistant professor under like uh, csir and uh, we are uh, uh, working on you know uh, functional foods and fatty liver uh, with uh, utilizing the molecular techniques especially crispr cas and you know to start with you know what i will do today i will uh, gonna you know introduce myself background you know how we know uh, myself you know got uh, uh, this wonderful you know uh, teachers and mentors which all you know pushed me towards you know this research so about me he like you know i was born and brought up in a small town in waniyambadi and uh, this is basically located you know uh, in the national highway between uh, chennai and bangalore so it is like waniyambadi is a very nice 
uh, town uh, around the uh, river beds of uh, Palar and uh, like you know uh, very uh, greenery place, uh, place and you know uh, it is like uh, something like you know uh, very attached uh, to the nature and uh, talking about my family like you know uh, my father uh, is a farmer my mother uh, she's a housewife and we are like you know three brothers i am the eldest and everything you know started like you know my schooling uh, in uh, tirupattur where i did my schooling uh, uh, in don bosco metric high secondary school later i uh, did my uh, uh, higher secondary uh, schooling uh, in hindu higher secondary uh, school at waniyambadi so it is it's like you know until my schooling i was like almost uh, you know an average student very naughty it is like you know uh, always fighting with you know playing with uh, friends it was sometime like you know during my pg it is like the first day of my pg sorry ug it is like you know where you know i was uh, uh, you know uh, had a chance to meet like my teachers who were all you know very instrumental who have pushed me towards like you know uh, taking up the uh, research so it is like you know uh, uh the first among them is uh, professor parni so who is the person who has you know pushed me to understand what is biochemistry so it is like you know he has given me a very nice intro like you know what is what and uh, what this will uh, do and uh, so that one interaction has pushed me to take up you know uh, made up my mind to take up you know biochemistry for my ug so later professor liagapalli professor anand babu professor hayat basha these these are the like you know uh, my teachers who have uh, uh, you know pushed, pushed me to understand the basics of biochemistry and it is like you know they have motivated me all their interactions words everything like you know uh, have pushed me to uh, inspire uh, like you know uh, take take it in a step by step process so later uh, completing my ug and pg uh, i did my uh, master uh, my mphil and phd in university of madras chennai so it is a time where uh, i learned more about uh, the science and under the great mentorship of, of uh, professor niranjali devraj and devraj so uh, later uh, after completing my phd i was uh, given a chance to work under the guidance of uh, dr brown golston so dr brown golston or nobel laureates so they got nobel prize sometime in the year 1985 for their uh, discovery on cholesterol research so still they have their active laboratory uh, at ut southwestern medical center so i was in a one way blessed to you know uh, pursue my post doctoral research under their uh, very able and mentor so with all this like you know it has pushed me in one or other way like you know to take up the science very seriously so it is like you know in the upcoming uh, slides i'm going to talk about like you know each and every aspect but so uh, this particular uh, you know ysl meeting why i have already taken up this like you know during my masters and during my phd i was being you know uh, very ably and uh, uh, rightfully guided so that guidance is more important which you know i feel that you know that is needed for the young researchers uh, it is like you know the students like the master students or the young investigators who want to aspire or you know want to take up the research need such a platform so for such such a platform is given to you you know by uh, dr felix and dr nitin so i appreciate that and you know uh, i will be more more happy like you know to take up more questions So it is like you know, if uh, by end of this you know uh, talk, if I am able to inspire at least one person, that would have been uh, my you know biggest achievement. So with this you know, I will uh, go further. Like uh, I joined CFTRA uh, in the year two thousand eighteen uh, as a scientist, and uh, so this is the uh, you know the uh, picture of our main building. So this is actually a pink palace. so which has been you know given to the csir organization by the maharaja the great maharaja so it is like you know uh, this is such a wide nice place like you know which uh, accepts everyone it is like you know uh, with uh, humbleness and uh, such a nice uh, city mysore 
and a very nice place to do research. So coming to my laboratory at uh, fatty liver research, laboratory of laboratory of fatty liver research at CFTRI. So I have a very small group, like you know, one postdoc, so Dr. Prabhu, so who got, who got awarded uh, by ICMR, and uh, three PhD students like uh, Ms. Nivia, Megatesh, Vani. So all of them are very good at their you know technical skills, and they are you know doing a great job. And uh, as on today, it is like you know I have completed like three uh, projects, and you know there are like three ongoing projects and one approved project. And uh, it is like I got a chance to you know guide the youngsters like you know MSc, BTech, MTech students. I am able to complete like six students. And at present, it is like you know I am guiding like you know 15 students under this uh, YSL program. So I am three students under the SRTP program. So the basic understanding, you know, like you know what I have with regard to the uh, this YSL program is that like you know. Uh, this is giving such a good platform at this pandemic situation. It is like, you know, it is uh, bridging up the space between the uh, young brains with that of the seasoned, you know, uh, teachers. So, so it is like, you know, again, a big salute to the, the organizing committee. And uh, this is my team, like, you know, myself, and as I said, you know, Dr. Prabhu uh, on my left, uh, Mrs. Nibia, Vani, Vengatesh, so a small group and we are uh, presently doing a good job like you know working on for the grants and happy to say that you know we have got a good number of you know projects that we are going to start working in the next uh, few months. So with this like you know uh, when we go like uh, I would like to brief like in two or three slides you know what we do at CFTRI. And then you know I'll come back and uh, give my views on you know the ideas for the young researchers. So at CFTRI, it is like you know we work on uh, the organ liver. So we all know like you know liver is a complex organ, and uh, the one that is you know portrayed here is a rat liver. And uh, as I said, it's the largest organ, and it plays a very major role in uh, metabolism, like you know synthesis and breakdown of proteins, storage of vitamins and uh, excretory function and vascular function and so on. It's a very key organ, so which is capable of, you know, regenerating. And uh, the reason, you know, why we chose to work, work with liver cells, that too specifically a cell type called stellate, is that like, you know, it was during my PhD, uh, my mentor, you know, Professor Lilangeli has given me a word, you know, Madan, why don't you go and look at uh, the term stellate? So she has just given me the word stellate. So because you know, I was so enthusiastic that time, so I used to run here and there. You know, it is like, you know, I used to, a lot of memories are, you know, coming up. It is like, you know, I used to just, you know, take up the uh, regular SDS page gel and I used to run uh, at a doorstep and say that, madam, you know, I got this uh, beautiful, uh, you know, lanes. So it is like, you know, uh, I was so enthusiastic and very inspired, very, by, by the teachers, you know, to take up research. And she has given me the first task is, you know, look at Stelle. So what I did, it is like, you know, I uh, rushed up and I, you know, uh, taken my time and uh, able to understand what is what. So, you know, to brief you, uh, liver is made up of in a huge number of cell population, but the major cell type that plays a major role in uh, liver function is hepatocytes, which everyone is aware of. In addition to hepatocytes, so which constitutes around 60%, there are other cell types like, you know, your bilar epithelium or endothelia, the liver macrophages like copper cells. But it was the cells called stellate, so which impressed everyone, like, you know, our group especially, because, you know, these are, uh, you know, fibroblasts, but when the liver is getting injured, these small population of cells will, you know, reflect in a bigger way. It is like, you know, they play a major role during your liver injury. So that is the reason, like, you know, we were very curious to study the basic biology between the stellate cells. So, to give you an idea, it is like, you know, in a normal liver, so these stellate cells will reside in the space of DC between your hepatocytes and professors play a major role during your 
liver regeneration and storage of vitamin A. But when your liver is getting injured, injured in the sense like you know your acute injury or your chronic injury or like you know your alcohol abuse, so these liver will get you know hardening. It's a process called scarring or hardening where uh, a specific cell type called uh, stellate, as I said, you know it will get activated. So these cells will uh, you know uh, show a feature called you know myofibroblast and they perform a lot of functions and you know which will be has to be addressed so that your liver uh, regeneration you know happens and you are you know uh, getting better and uh, this i want to skip because you know this will uh, take you at a in deeper molecular uh, level so i will skip the slide and you know what we majorly do at CFTRA is, as I said, you know we are uh, uh, mandate of the institute is to work with the functional foods. So we try to address the clinical conditions, like you know, with regard to my group, the fatty liver, especially the non-alcoholic fatty liver, using the uh, food bioactives. Like you know, one such food bioactive which we are you know presently working at is uh, bioflavonoid called morin. So these morin is you know uh, seen in the goa leaves and uh, you know they are uh, reported uh, where you know it is acting upon the uh, cancer cells uh, because it is very much you know antioxidant because of it is having penta hydroxy uh, hydroxyl group and it is you know shown to have you know anti inflammatory effects upper process inducing effects so with these all background you know we started working uh, using this morin and we could able to see like you know very encouraging results uh, and you know the research are underway to you know focus specifically to the signaling cascades is to encash the you know the productive effects of such you know nutraceuticals against the clinical conditions okay and uh, with this you know small uh, background information it is like you know uh, i would like to share my you know no, uh, experience like you know what I have you know got uh, through my PhD through my you know postdoctoral research uh, under you know different uh, you know uh, uh, aspects. So one such aspect is mentoring. So mentoring is something like you know what I understand is is it's an art. It is something like you know that uh, is not readily you know uh, transferable. It is like you know something an art. So where a yeah, mentor is going to you know give you all the necessary knowledge like your advice your technical skills your or you know moral support so that you know the uh, students are you know benefited and they are inspired and you know take uh, so that you know they are seriously taking up the passionate towards the science or research so this is what the basic understanding between your mentorship so it is like you know for the audience like you know i am very sure that uh, the uh, earlier speakers have given you know very nice uh, uh, content about uh, mentoring, mentorship, different types of mentorship. So, you know, that is very much important. So, as I said, you know, I am one or other way blessed with, you know, uh, beautiful and, you know, uh, blessed uh, mentors. So, Dr. Prof Professor Devanjali Devaraj, she's my, you know, PhD guy, and Professor Devaraj, my co, co guy. You know they were instrumental like you know for me to where you know i have taken up uh, this science you know very seriously so it was during my phd days like you know where as i said earlier like you know i, I used to be very enthusiastic it, it's like you know uh, the mentoring as i said it's not only about you know uh, giving you the space in the laboratory it is like you know uh, making you to understand the seriousness of the science uh, you know, set up the laboratory, uh, maintaining the ambience of the group, like, you know, like your group communication and, you know, uh, giving you the right skill set so that, you know, you take up the uh, research, you know, very seriously. And later, during my postdoctoral research, it was like, you know, these two uh, gentlemen, like, you know, Dr. Goldstein and Dr. Brown, as I said, you know, they are Nobel laureates. And you know what? They are so, so, so ground, ground, grounded. Like you know, uh, you you may not you know even uh, feel a little awkward. Like you know, they are uh, such an established researchers. It is like there were a lot of uh, information that I have learned in their laboratory during the three years time. It is like you know they have given me a, enough you know platform, time, uh, and also the knowledge. It is like you know that is more important. 
and you know that is where you know i got the uh, that uh, kind of you know uh, fire it is like you know something like to take up research at a very serious uh, note and and uh, it is like you know uh, when i talk about mentoring i cannot uh, stop uh, you know telling the, uh, the golden words from my mentors it is like you know moral support it is like you know uh, professor rangeli Uh, uh, she has been instrumental in molding me uh, as a researcher and she is the one who always say think differently it is like you know no one should you know think in a different note not look at everything at the same perspective and she used to say like you know if you get a result at the first try then you may not in you know achieve in uh, mastering that particular technique so uh, the understanding in such that it is like you know and uh, the all the five years you know where i spent with uh, professor nilanjali has been been very much you know uh, very beneficial it is like you know uh, it has molded me in one or other way so which for which you know i am grateful uh, for for uh, the stuff my life and uh, the most important uh, you know aspect in research you know what i understand and what i you know uh, felt is risk taking so it is like you know uh, it was during my uh, pg so if i am right during my pg it is like you know i got a, uh, in uh, two minds whether to take up research or you know to move on to a industry to you know uh, start earning so it was like you know that time uh, our uh, family was you know very deeply uh, at issue with financial constraints but still you know because of the uh, inspiration which i got from my teachers you know i have taken the risk it is like you know uh, because it's not easy during that time without fellowship and you know without supporting you your family to take up you know research so and also you know i should you know uh, thank my uh, family members who have supported me immensely so it is like uh, my father i still remember the word he said you know the next five years i'm going to take care of you and uh, for which you know uh, we, for all the pain you know what they have uh, taken up now we are you know uh, getting uh, the the fruits in return so it is like the risk the risk taking ability is very much important and later sometime in the year uh, 2013 again like you know after completing my phd so it was a phase like you know some 6 to 7 months where you know uh, i got lot of negative emails from my uh, you know for the post doctoral application it is like none of them were uh, positive it is like uh, either they would uh, turn down the application or they would say like you know no position available at the moment but it was like my mentor she usually say if something is uh, you're not getting it readily then you know some something big is awaiting you so that is what she usually say so so i was you know very positive so uh, and waited waited and finally you know got a one beautiful and uh, 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 response from you know dr brown goes in laboratory so in such way that, that you know i was you know very much uh, uh, you know blessed and uh, the the reason why i am taking this i am telling this is like you know during that time i was in a uh different thoughts so whether to you know go at uh, and take up the uh, you know research associate position in an uh, uh, bio industry or you know uh, just you know wait patiently so that you know you will get a better position uh, with regard to the post doctoral research so so this risk taking ability is must for a researcher so that you know one or other way that will will be fruitful at your in a later part of your research and this is the uh, word that my mentor uh, dr brown usually usually say work on something that everybody thinks is a done so he usually says that you know uh, with regard to their uh, nobel laureate work the work that has been awarded nobel prize it is like they look at the science in a different perspective so it is like you know uh, their you know basic understanding Uh, and the topic which they have taken up is familiar hypercholesterolemia so the familiar hypercholesterolemia cholesterolemia patients are very rare it is like you know one in 
500 patients or 1 in 25 you know heart attack patients usually are hypercholesterolemia that is familiar hypercholesterolemia it's a rare uh, disorder so they have taken up that okay it is like you know which is something you know uh, other people will ignore and they uh, focus only on something that it is you know heart and sensation so with that uh, the determination and so on it is like you know they could able to achieve and they are still achieving in a bigger platform so i still always you know put this uh, in any slides like you know work on something that everybody thinks is at done so this is something like you know uh, which my phd mentor and also my postdoc mentor so which has you know uh, showed me in my you know deep which which is in deep mind so that which i want to uh, share with you all that you know always you know look at a different perspective don't go you know with uh, one uh, sided or you know with uh, the focus should be in such a way and uh, the second one is your decision making so so, so decision making is you know something like you know uh, one should be uh, not afraid to take out as i said it is like you know uh, with uh, my personal experience uh, at uh, some critical situations like you know, as i said you know financial constraints uh, i was you know uh, made to think you know twice whether to take up research or you know just support the family by earning but it was like you know with the uh, positive note like you know with the uh, advice of my mentors and my uh, parents it is like you know the decision which i have taken i never regret it okay the hard times will be there and you should not regret so that is more important and again my uh, boss used to say in your whole life there is only one make or break your decision it is like you know it is the time that you should you know either make it or you know just leave it so that is what you know my boss usually say and uh, talking about the time management so that is more important so for a researcher and for uh, the uh, students who want to take up research they should you know think uh, this uh, in a serious note because uh, the time management will allow the students or the researchers to focus on the work and also contribute you know in a productive way so that is more important and uh, one should able to also manage uh, the you know your personal life and your uh, uh, work life so that is where like you know your skill is also comes into play and again dr goldstein my another mentor used to say like you know some people work for seven days in a week and still waste a lot of time so it is like you know uh, i want to share the experience that i had in their laboratory it is like you know they usually uh, we usually meet once a week that is on every monday during the lunch time so i still remember the time 12 to 1 it is like you know uh, the entire session like the entire week they won't even you know uh, bother to trouble you it is like they won't even you know see you whether you are there at your table or not but it is like they give the freedom and they have uh, taught uh, us as a student it is like you know to manage the time so it is like if you are uh, very much focused and if you got the skill set of you know managing your time then definitely you know you need not work you know all the seven days it should be like you know you are uh, hard work should always be coupled with your smartness so that is what you know my uh, mentors usually uh, you know advise me and uh, and coming to like you know uh, what are all the important skill sets you know for a successful researcher so this is what you know i feel that you know my my, uh, my earlier speakers might would have been given the insight but i still you know from my personal uh, experience and also like you know from uh, my uh, mentors advice i want to emphasize that you know always uh, young investigators like you know like me or you know the upcoming researchers always you know initiate your research with a clear goals that is more important it is like you know it should not be sloppy it is like you know you should have a clear cut you know idea of what you want to define or what you want to address so that is more important the second one is stepping out of your comfort zone so which is what you know uh, i was being taught uh, during my phd it is like you know if you are very much comfortable with your uh, particular work 
better you know you should uh, think about you know stepping out and you know uh, challenging yourself for example it is like you know it was that time in my laboratory where uh, they were very uh, less number of you know uh, people were uh, working on uh, cell culture it was that time and uh, they usually say that you know lot of reasons constraints but it is it's like you know the advice from my mentors and also like you know moral support so where you know i have come out stepped out of my comfort zone and uh, there on you know i started learning each and every aspect you know even a minute aspect and also you know uh, even during my post doctoral research you know uh, there were a lot of challenges and uh, i have never you know uh, afraid of you know taking up the challenge so that is what you know as a young investigator one should always think that you know this is the time to challenge yourself so that you know you are stepping out of your comfort zone and you know getting the uh, all your you know knowledge and uh, most important for a young researcher is take up the criticism it is like you are you may be right in your perspective but you should be open you should be humble and you should be open to take up the criticism that is more important so at cftr in my laboratory i still you know Uh, actively listen to my students it is like you know i take up their ideas and uh, also like you know uh, that group communication is also very much important it is like you no know, one should not feel that you know as a mentor so you are the one who will take the uh, uh, the go like you know your decision no it is like you know with regard to science one should think that you know you are a learner so you are learning each and every day from each and every one that is more much more important and the fourth point will be your building up your society social network so that will you know pave way for your uh, collaborations that is more important it is like you know to get success to get the fruit success it is like you know you should uh, come out of your comfort zone you should be very open you should you know try to interact so for example you like you know uh, i i always you know remember the three c's which uh, my mentors used to you know tell me so your uh, communication your contact will determine your carry c c c c so that is what you know i always tell my students and it is like your communication will uh, take up and determine or will you know uh, uh, give you a contact zone that will determine your career okay and uh, which i have already said that hard work so hard work alone will not pave way it is like you know smartness it is like as, as a researcher it is like you know you should think smartly it is like you know if you are not getting your experiments working so better you know take a uh, break think you know twice like, like you know what is what what is lacking there so that way you will able to you know uh, understand the uh, issues so that you can address it in a very smart way and most important aspect for the the uh, end researchers is that you know their communication and writing skills that is more important it is like you know never get afraid of you know developing your communication skills and uh, read books uh, you know that is more important and never be afraid of you know writing your grants so that is what you know from my personal experience what i have seen so after joining cftra like you know i have been trying for the last two and a half years and you know now i am getting the uh written like you know the fruits in written it is like you know i have got very uh, a couple of grants uh, very good grants and we are already started working on so it is like never uh, you know be afraid of you know developing your uh, communication skills and most importantly it is like you know one should able to understand and you know balance the work life and your family life so that will you know it will determine or that will uh, put you at the right spot you know to become or you know taste the success or you know learn science so that is what you know i always feel and i always tell my students like you know so these are all the key points which i always tell my students so this is a photograph uh, during my you know uh, phd uh, sorry post doctoral research so this is my mentor dr goldstein uh, but on the day dr brown was not there so Dr. Goldstein, so he is. So you won't uh, like no. This time I would like to uh, emphasize like uh, he is such a grounded person. Like 
he has totally dedicated his life for science. It is like uh, he has not uh, uh, presently is, is not having anyone in his family, but he has uh, considered everyone in the department as his family. It is as a chairman, like at the age of like 76, he is very much active. Like he comes to work at uh, six o'clock and leaves. 6 a.m. and you know leaves the lab you know as a last person at 8 a.m. at 8 p.m. Such a dedicated so which has uh, which will you know he will inspire you like you know in a, on the first day on the first minute such a noble person and you know with this like you know I would like to uh, uh, you know finish off my you know uh, talk and uh, we'll be ha more happy to you know answer up uh, your questions like you know all your uh, uh, scientific questions or you know any questions so that you know I can be a part of your you know career. Yes, please. Thank you, sir, for sharing your wisdom with us. Uh, it is said by the great AG, APJ Abdul Kalam, teaching is a very noble profession that shapes the character caliber and future of an individual. With your wisdom, we came to know the importance of mentors in our life, how they can guide us within the whole, whole period of human life. Apart from this your journey from Vanimbadi to Chennai and to Texas has given us a motivation along with this your uh, current situation like you are guiding three MSc students and the CSIR SRTP program as well as 15 MSc students and then YSL programs along with that the knowledge regarding liver that's all about human body particularly as you said you are working on red liver and more precisely hepatic still cells and also giving us knowledge about bioactives like morine, which are anti-cancerous, mainly present in almond and guava. And thanks for this such an insightful lecture. And also you have taught us about the importance of time management, risk taking and decision making in a person's life. It is said that uh, the whole life can be summarized in a sentence, and that sentence can particularly as it still exists. And also in the almond and the importance of time management, research can be summarized in a sentence. Knowledge. So, so here we have some questions with it. Yeah. Okay. So this is from Pushpa. Uh, hello, I'm Pushpa from Bhopal, doing my PhD in microbiology. What is better afterwards, a job or postdoctorate? As you have done your postdoctorate, students in India, questions from the audience, Pushpa, uh, has better afterwards, a job or postdoctorate, better option concerning postdoctorate in India or abroad? What all parameters? Okay, so first, you know, thank you, Yesha, for, you know, very nicely summarizing, uh, you know, my talk. And uh, coming to the, the question by uh, the candidate Pushpa, yeah, it is like, you know, I personally, from my experience, I feel like, you know, it's better to take up like a short uh, postdoctoral, you know, research abroad. So because, you know, that is where, I, as I said, you know, step out of your comfort zone. It is like, you know, you should, you know, step out of your comfort zone and, you know, try to understand the other uh, lab culture. It is like, you know, something what uh, uh, my mentors usually say. Day. like you know uh, it is like where we the, labor the laboratory where i did my postdoc it has like you know different cultural setup it is like you know i was the only indian and they will be like you know one american one uh, russian so the basic understanding is that you know you will be able to get to learn from each and every one so not only your research and also your the culture between across the Globe. And uh, definitely, so India at present scenario, like, you know, there were like a lot of grants that has been opened up to take up, you know, research very seriously. But my personal view is, will be like, you know, you know, after your PhD, try to take like, you know, a minimum of three to four years of postdoctoral research experience abroad. And that too, you know, uh, try to uh, uh, get, uh, you know, trained by, you know, good established researchers. And always, like, you know, uh, come back to India so that, you know, we are here to, you know, we, we have to give back to 
the country in a bigger way so it is like you know that is my perspective thank you yeah. sir so the next question is uh, this question is basically something which has excited me and maybe curious to know about you as you say that you are from university of texas so the question is uh, what was the process of for applying for post doctorate in us okay so the process is you know uh, very simple it is like you know you should have your uh, phd awarded it is like you know you should have your phd degree awarded and uh, you need to uh, uh, approach it is like you know draft a nice cover letter and first as i said first uh, define your career goals and you know, select your uh, you know area of research that is more important it is not something like you know you are uh, applying every uh, lab just for the sake of your uh, you know uh, position so that won't help in the long run so first clearly define your research goal and try to you know pick up the laboratories and start you know uh, writing them a letter and uh, the letter should be in such a way that you know that should uh, make the principal investigator to uh, read at least one more time so that is where you know the uh, aspect lies and uh, yeah i think i have answered you yeah dr madan it's a fantastic presentation uh, thank you so much for uh, being with us today uh, especially you know the risk taking is a, a very important message that you uh, you relayed you know and also i i learned it for the first time that you work with a nobel prize winner it's a, it's a big privilege to be you know it's a once in a lifetime opportunity most of us didn't have it yeah it's it's an amazing so we have a very interesting question by sri prasad joshi is asking how does it feel to be a student of a nobel Sorry, come again. I I missed your question. How does? So he's asking, how does it feel to be a student of a Nobel laureate? Okay, so it is like you know, to me like uh, since I know that you know they are Nobel laureates, you know I was very much excited. So when I first you know boarded my flight to uh, Chennai. but you know the first day they will uh, break that you know that particular uh, issue it is like they are so much ground it, it is like you know they will inspire you in such a way that uh, as i said you know they are very much dedicated to science so even uh, i cannot even you know uh, cannot be able to explain their uh, you know uh, dedication towards the science and uh, just by their regular activities they will inspire each and every one of them it is like uh, definitely it is you know one or other way that is where you know i, I in my course slides you know, i have said that i am one or other way blessed uh, to get you know beautiful teachers like you know and mentors so which have really molded my career you know where they, these things have pushed me to take up the science in a serious way okay great we also have dr nitin with us uh, over to nitin Yeah. Good morning, all of you, and uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Madan for such an interesting and enlightening talk. And uh, I am happy that uh, you are guiding the 15 students under YSL. You know this, that is a, a big uh, achievement, and uh, uh, India or we need a mentor like that. Uh, despite of their busy schedule, you know, uh, uh, you are giving a time to the students, uh, and uh, uh, that is very good. so i would like i would just like to say that uh, starting from a very humble background in small village in tamil nadu to a phd from university of madras and uh, post doc from usa and currently you are working as a scientist in uh, csir cftri mysore your journey looks easy but uh, it took years and lot of your hard work and i congratulate uh, for you Uh, you rightly said that guidance is very important for students and uh, hard work should uh, uh, coupled with this smart work you know and uh, the way you have explained the you know uh, tips for the researcher they all were uh, very uh, important and crucial and i request all the participants uh, if you want to a true researcher then uh, i think uh, uh, the topics uh, the points like risk taking and time management 
you know uh, these are uh, very very important and crucial uh, factors come out of your uh, comfort zone and then only you will be able to do uh, uh, some good thing so thank you so much uh, dr madan once again and uh, uh, we all are uh, privileged that uh, uh, we got a chance to uh, hear your interesting journey over to you uh, dr felix Dr. Felix, it's muted. Dr. Felix, you can unmute. Yeah, uh, over to Yesha. You can pick up the next question from the pool. Sure, sir. I will pick up the next question. The next question is, sir, how is your specialization in hepatic cellular cell biology well matched with food processing practices at CFTRA SR, what's the role of C CRISPR genes cascade over hepatic cellulite cells? Okay, so it is like, you know, first I would like to clarify, yes. uh, you know, the question. It is like, uh, yeah, let me go through the question. Yeah, yeah. So it is like, you know, no, what I understand from the question is how my expertise with stellate cells uh, is going to help, you know, with having the, you know, the content of CRISPR in it, right? Yes. So it is like, you know, as I said, like uh, in clinical conditions, something like in your fatty liver, these stellate cells are, get, are the prime cells which will get, you know, activated. And definitely there will be like, you know, the key transcription factors will be dysregulated, uh, you know, uh, very precisely. So, with the expertise what I uh, acquired in uh, during my postdoctoral research, that is uh, CRISPR Cas. So, what we are currently doing at CFTRI is to try to uh, knock out the uh, that uh, aggravated you know transcription factor and to understand the functional uh, aspects with regard to the stellate cell biology. And uh, we are also you know using the functional foods uh, to address the uh, you know, activation of the stellate cells, and uh, that is the another part. And uh, basically, uh, as a food institute, you know, it is a mandate or uh, for each and everyone at CFTRI to you know uh, bring out the uh, solution uh, for which you know we are you know trying to explore the uh, the biological activities of uh, the nutraceutical part. So at present, you know, we are working on the most of the flavonoids and carotenoids to address this, uh, you know, stellate cell activation. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, you know, and we have a question from Priya. Priya is asking about uh, pursuing a career in, uh, you know, a career in uh, uh, this one, the food technology. So, what is your suggestion? Should I take uh, home science as a BSc? So, BSc home science or um, you know, what should I do to pursue a career in food science? That is her question. And coming to the, you know, the functional food, uh, I also have an interesting experience. To show. Dr. Felix. For this uh, high, high altitude research institute. Could you hear? No, no, I missed your question. Oh, the question it's is the... Yeah, the question is by Priya. Priya is asking yeah. the question is about uh, uh, pursuing a career in yeah. uh, food, food sciences. So okay. what I should do? Uh, is it uh, is it a, a home science, BSc home science is a good option or not? You know, Definitely. so that is what the BSc is. Definitely. It is like, you know, uh, no doubt about, you know, uh, the, uh, see, here you know, I would like to emphasize one point which uh, my... Uh, a teacher like you know uh, dr parani has told me you know during my first meeting with him, it is like uh, i was not sure you know what is meant by biochemistry that time so i was you know as a uh, just passed out you know uh, higher secondary all i know is chemistry so he was you know uh, uh, trying to help me out by explaining that you know each and every uh, uh, you know of course has its value like you know for example your uh, bsc chem Chemistry or BSc Biochemistry, even like you know, BA English or you know, literature, whatever may be the case. 
but what he has said is take up it in a serious note and try to you know uh, uh, dedicatedly you know work for it and definitely you will get the you know benefit out of it so that is what uh, you know my mentor have uh, told me and with regard to the question raised by priya very true it is like you know if you want to uh, take up a career in food science so not only like you know uh, to you know uh, i would suggest like you know you try to uh, go uh, to the research part it is like you know uh, don't stop it at your bachelor's or master's level so definitely you know uh, stay positive and uh, try to you know take up the research that is more important yeah so the gender is also yes. now coming to a you know uh, 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 i mean the gender differentiation of this food science for example earlier days it's mostly common for the females uh, you know because it's like yeah. uh, home science and the cooking is mostly a, a work you know associated stereotype is like that right the uh, the females are more broad now there is nothing like that even boys are choosing the home science and uh, you know the, the chef are actually turning out so it's it's open for males and boys together so the food science is an amazing place and uh, you are the first person who is actually coming from the food, food technology uh, to be part of us so you can actually throw some lights on other institutes in india where the food science research is going on or food technology research is going on i was sharing earlier that my experience in antarctic mission uh, is that uh, you know we had this long shelf life biryani Uh, okay. you know it is a basically the biryani by developed by this high altitude research center of this drdo so they are also doing this kind of work you know and even i think i heard this isro is also working on this kind of uh, uh, you know indian food uh, for the space explorers uh, you know that that kind of work is exciting so maybe you can share some ideas on what other institutes or other universities where the student prospective students can try yeah it is like in you know, a good question it is like you know cftri is not only uh, the only institute you know which works on uh, food research it is like you know there are other research institutes you know where i can pinpointly say uh, our sister laboratory like you know hbt palampu and uh, there is like you know indian institute of uh, pulses research uh, there is a, a research institute for crop for processing so there is one ihba uh, 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 let me you know uh, figure out it is in tanjavur uh, uh, and uh, it's an it's an mofpi institute uh, one second i forgot it you know this time yeah uh, iafpt so iafpt uh, again you know which works majorly on food research and uh, with a question uh, from you dr felix it is like you know the cftra has got lot of good technology uh, which you know helps, helps you know each and every uh, uh, person at home level it is for example uh, the technology of you know the mtr gulab jamun or like you know i mean the gulab jamun mm -hmm. mix ready mix and the baby amul food so everything is you know been you know uh, have come out from cftra so not only that Uh, the uh, uh, foods you know that can you know uh, extend the shelf life so cftra has played a very major role so with regard to the uh, you know the number of you know the uh, processes and patents with regard to uh, food uh, applications so yeah all right thank you dr nitin over to you yeah i would like to ask a few questions uh, like uh, as uh, you said uh, many people are working in the area of uh, food biotechnology and food technology so what are the uh, current uh, research areas in biochemistry or food technology where the students can uh, pursue their career you mean uh, uh, the places or what Some no 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 is... areas 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 current area, research areas research areas so with regard to biochemistry what i can say is like you know biochemistry is uh, definitely mother of you know sciences like you know life sciences so that is what you know i has been always uh, told by my mentors so as i said first you know a student has to first get inspired for example uh, one of my student so when he has approached me he was you know uh, he has requested me that you know he wanted to work with uh, cancer the reason being is like you know his mother uh as past the way you know just because she has got you no know, breast cancer so he has got you know something 
you know being you know inspired so he wants to uh, take up that and try to you know uh, work on the aspect so likewise you know i would uh, you know suggest or you know my view is that the students should you know with regard to the uh, uh, biochemistry so it is a vast it's a bigger broader area so they have to just first think about the uh, identifying the problem or uh, the the discipline then you know they can you know uh, focus more focusedly they can uh, work on it okay so uh, the next question is that as you are working in cft ri uh, which is a food institute you know and uh, yesterday only i uh, heard in the news that uh, uh, in india 80 uh, 68% of the milk you know the people consuming they it is uh, not uh, the pure form of milk and likewise uh, there are several products which have a certain you know certain ingredients uh, uh, which which might uh, affect the health of the people and in that report they have mentioned that by 2025 85% of the people will suffer from cancer if uh, they will not drink the healthy milk you know so uh, i would like yeah i would like to you know throw some light on that that how to uh, control these kind of activities what you have uh, the question is very right it is like you know a cftri uh, has got a department called fsacl safety laboratory uh, which is a nodal laboratory so, so it is like you know for example uh, in, in the last year the uh, the adult friends with uh, respect to the maggi it has come to cftri for testing so it is like you know cftri is very much equipped with all the facilities so that you know it has been serving for uh, the food testing laboratory and uh, coming to the real question like you know uh, despite of all this it is definitely up to the you know the individuals like you know the uh, food processing uh, industries and uh, so on just to understand the uh, i feel that you know they should understand the seriousness of the uh, health issues so with regard to the the specific you know preservatives so that is why like you know the projects at presently at cftri so the, the the recent project that even you know we are working at so we are trying to uh, come out of a different approach so we call it as a greener approach it is for example like you know uh, to extract the food bioactives the common approach is like you know to uh, use uh, different alcohols to you know extract the bioactives but now we are you know going for greener approaches by using you know super critical fluid extraction methods and also cleaner approaches using your membrane filtration and so on so that we are trying to minimize the these you know adulterants so this is the understanding that you know uh, people has to you know get to know and they should uh, seriously think that you know it's not only the consumers it's also the uh, the other persons uh, with affiliated you know or uh, surrounded by the families also will get affected uh, by uh, these kind of you know uh, preservatives or you know adulterants uh, in the food especially because you know this is something like you know very uh, uh, unique domain like food which which is you know open to everyone over to you yesha yes so here i have some questions from audience uh, from ravi kumar during this pandemic period will it be possible for a phd candidate to apply for post doctorate at usa how best it's possible for young budding scientist no uh, this is such a very critical you know period uh, with regard to you know applying for post docs abroad because you know uh, the financial crunch is such a way it is not only you know affected the india it is affected you know all throughout the world so to my understanding you know the discussion with my friends you know what i understand is so at the moment you know all the visas are freezed and uh, they are you know trying to rotate the positions you know internally so maybe like you know only the time will tell like you know maybe like in in uh, maybe another 6 to 6 months to 1 year will be the you know the breathing space that uh, all the countries will ask for 
so that you know uh, if there is any vaccination or drug for this pandemic then you know something will turn up with regard to the post doctoral positions abroad okay so my uh, mine is a point I, i just want to add on to the nitin's uh, you know comment about the the milk yes. that i have covered several of the videos in my channel about the endocrine disrupting chemicals so it's not really adult run but you know the, uh, i was i've been uh, uh, telling everybody to stop using the milk packet milk you know so you can simply get the milk directly from the source or the milkman so that the edcs have been linked with pcos the polycystic ovary disease in uh, female and also even antarctic penguins the microplastics is actually uh, infertility is actually causes so plastic is the main reason I, i just want to add on that point another is that uh, many of these problem with the plastic it's a policy decision from the government the government has to intervene uh, successive governments in the center uh, be congress or bjp i mean nobody is actually doing any uh, you know hardcore uh, you know bpa for example bisphenol a is not prohibited here in india while many of the developing countries bpa is uh, completely prohibited uh, abroad as well you know even developing countries uh, you know the poor countries uh, even sri lanka bpa is prohibited but here in india bpa is not prohibited uh, which is an estrogen analog you know it's a very serious contaminant in plastics so you know at a individuals level my advice is to stop using plastic as much as possible especially with the, with regard to milk so my point here to you is about molecular gastronomy which is uh, you know is trending in the field of uh, uh you know functional food and the nutritional uh, you know food technology so the molecular gastronomy one of the the news that has come around four years back i mean it's still going on is about the meat you know lab grown vegetarian meat <laughs> so that kind of work is going on in your uh, cftri because yes. in india more, mostly vegetarian so you know they if they want to enjoy a nice bite of a, a burger uh, you know so uh, a hamburger <laughs> so yes, no. you know that yes Yes, yeah. go ahead. I am, as I said, you know, I am relatively new, but you know, I got a chance to you know interact with uh, the scientists at CFTRI and to understand their uh, projects. Like there is one project, you know, that uh, being currently undertaken is like you know mock meat. Uh, so it, it is like you know basically like uh, uh, they are uh, they are you know uh, planning to get it done. It's industrial project, if I am right, and uh, using the soil. and you know the technology that you know they are uh, presently you know trying to work out is to bring out the same structure strain uh, i mean of the real meat the structure and also the content so it is like you know one can easily uh, bring out the nutritional composition but you know for a, you know as a, a consumer point of view it is like to bring out the structural resemblance or something like of the real meat is a challenging one so there are you know such projects that's been uh, you know taken up uh, by cfpr it is there and we have many of the fruits which are just like meat you know for example uh, one of the often overlooked fruit is jackfruit Uh, not many people are actually fan of the jackfruit but jackfruit you know especially the raw jackfruit when you cook mm -hmm. it uh, you know the, the consistency is more like a meat and uh, yeah maybe we we really need to fund more uh, research on uh, you know how to use functional food from the jackfruit so it is abundant in especially in south india uh, doctor, yeah over doctor, to doctor felix i want to add yes. on that your uh, meat point the institute of chemical technology ict mumbai and the good food institute india are partnering to set up the world first government research center for the development of clean meat okay, okay so this this is uh, uh, coming up and i think uh, in coming time will india will be able to uh, do r and d and production of uh, uh, clean meat i see good good very good point all right so over to dr nitin would you like to add few more points we are already up, up time is up but still we can uh, have uh, one or two questions yeah so this is just as a young faculty i would like to know you know your experience uh, uh, as you got the permanent position in cftri so you can uh, throw some light that uh, what are the important parameters or steps you think that uh, uh, it is required to get a job in uh, institutes like a csir so so definitely it is like you know as i said uh, not only at csir any in no institute with india with regard to you know india it is like the basic uh, requirement you know they have added up you know post doctoral research so what i would say like you know for the young uh, researchers it is like as i said after your phd take up your uh, post doctoral research for at least 3 to 4 years 
and you know uh, then you know you can you know start you know uh, applying for the position and uh, definitely like you know uh, to my understanding like you know there are like uh, n number of institutes uh, not only uh, with uh, cf csir uh, dbt icmr and so on it is like you know and they are you know recruiting at real pace and uh, there is definitely a uh, good number of chances for you know uh, young researchers uh, between the age like you know 32 35 36 uh, with having you know good post doctoral research experience to get you know been recruited at you know premier institutes in india that is possible yeah but, yeah but maybe i will slightly disagree with you in this point because yeah. uh, nowadays india also has a good laboratories and a good guide you know and uh, if a student uh, can do good work in phd and if he has a good uh, track record then recruiters uh, should also think that uh, it is not only the postdoc uh, uh, experience which is important uh, for the selections i think overall the capability and potential of the candidate should be seen if he has a uh, lots of uh, fellowships and all that is also uh, more than enough yeah i understand i understand your point i could easily you know uh, get the you know the content of your uh, you know uh, your point true but you know since i have been you know telling uh, through this talk that you know step out of your comfort zone and try to you know understand the other lab culture so that is the point you know i want to emphasize again and uh, uh, the re the reason i said like you know post doctoral experience counts because it is uh, has become the essential uh, requirement for a position and uh, i agree that you know uh, the post doctoral experience is must and it may not be of abroad experience it is like if a candidate is uh, having you know good uh, phd uh, you know outputs and also if he has uh, undertaken any post doctoral experience even at india they will be definitely considered that is for sure yeah thank you uh, that's yeah. uh, from my side yeah so i just want to add on to that point again that is something to do with the deep rooted stereotyping or uh, you know the mindset is uh, the problem here uh, one of my friend uh, lakotia professor lakotia from the bhu the insa fellow and he had written extensively about this matter uh, especially even the indian academicians from prestigious institute they are shunned away from publishing in indian journals you know even even though the journals are really good they think that it's kind of inferior come on let's publish in a foreign journal that is much better that mindset we have to change it i think that is the root cause of this issue uh, the postdoc abroad uh, the prestigious institute prefer while uh, you know postdoctoral we also have very good postdoc scheme like kothari or uh, national postdoc fellowship or inspire uh, people are actually you know yeah, of course the prestigious things have got some value but usual postdoc are actually treated secondary that mindset we really have to change it if you look at more deep into it it's the same mindset that we actually uh, you know while we if you love pets you know uh, uh, let me have a, a german shepherd or uh, you know or a chihuahua mexican chihuahua why not uh, uh, the street dog or street cat that you know people tend to associate something imported or foreign is always better so that i think that is the main reason for it and plus i just want to add on to one more point that uh, going abroad for phd is also a good option and our government has got this mhrd ministry of uh, human resource development mhrd has got several uh, you know a nomination yes. government scholarship nomination i also got through one of the scheme maxed uh, which is uh, currently it's open if you are a Uh, if you are looking for the you know the the viewers are looking to do the uh, masters the phd abroad you can apply for a max and there's several uh, scholarship schemes uh, open so even uh, phd abroad is also a good option and uh, yeah that is i just want to add that point that uh, the mindset is do you agree with that or not no with uh, dr yeah yeah as more than this yeah yes sir would you like to add some more point one 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 question maybe the last question because we are already up the time uh yeah sure we can add one question okay so this is from for uh, from food processing are there any summer training programs for undergraduate students in india in the field of food processing by kriti gupta okay yeah so there are it is like you know uh, it is there in cftra and also in other food research institute it is there it is like only thing is that you know uh, in this pandemic everything they have put it on for online mode but uh, let's hope for the best and once this pandemic is over 
then you know they can uh, do the real uh, you know lab training for uh, between like you know three to six months okay thank you sir you have made us realize this, that research is not just an innovation but it's an amalgamation of a lot of skills like communication socializing mentoring and psychological balance as well thank you yeah thank yeah you. thanks Over a lot you, uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Dr. Madhanik. It's a fantastic uh, presentation. I, I, I was enjoying from start to end. You actually uh, said so many interesting points about the mentor, uh, mentees and mentorship, as well as risk taking and critical thinking. Uh, I mean, a lot of things, uh, you know, and also, I mean, uh, you uh, completely followed our guideline on uh, you actually pick up some of the important topics to uh, make the things more clearer to the viewers and make it more useful. So I appreciate for your uh, time and energy that you put forward for our YSL Speak series, as well as for the VISL, the virtual internship program for the students. And thanks a lot uh, for coming, uh, you know, to be part of us today. Over to Dr. Nitin uh, to add a few words about uh, today's session. And uh, I mean, the next session today is at uh, 4.30 uh, by Dr. Rupesh Srivastava. Uh, he's going to talk on immunology, right? Maybe you can uh, say a few words on him as well. Yeah. Over to Dr. Nitin, yes. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Madan uh, and uh, Yesha. It was a nice session and uh, I uh, really uh, enjoyed it and I'm sure most of the participants also enjoyed because this is the first session on the on the biochemistry you know and uh, uh, thank you for that and the next uh, speaker is uh, Dr. Rupesh Rivastav and he's uh, also he has a, a good uh, achievements and credit to uh, his profile and he will be speak, speaking on uh, osteoimmunology you know uh, it is a branch of the immunology so another uh, new area, immunology. So I'm sure uh, most of the uh, students who are interested to do research in immunology, they will get benefit uh, out of his uh, talk. So uh, uh, that's it. Thank you, all of you. And uh, see you at uh, 4.30. So thank you, uh, you know, Dr. Nitin, Dr. Felix, and, you know, Yesha for moderating today's session. I thoroughly enjoyed and, you know, and uh, big kudos to you know both Dr. Nitin and Felix for this noble job. So happy to be part of this program. Thank you.